If you have a garden and are tired of always trying to figure out how to get the vegetables from the garden to the kitchen, this is the garden basket for you. This is the garden basket we're gonna make from materials that we already have available so that we can pick our vegetables, hose them off and bring them into the house clean and bug free. First thing we do is cut the two end pieces. I'm ripping the rails, the pieces that run from end to end for the length of the garden basket. This is a eight inch board, a one by eight. So of course it's planed down so it's not actually that big. I'm ripping these pieces about an inch wide. This is going to be the handle that you carry it by. It's a two by four that I cut down. And here's all our pieces. These are the rail pieces, the two end pieces, and then these are the pieces for the handle, the two uprights, and then this is the handle where you hold it. I'm using a can to make two rounded corners. So by rounding the corners of the end pieces, I'll just bend the hardware cloth around the ends and they will be sort of a nice rounded basket when we're done. And I mean, there's all kinds of styles. I thought about it and just came up with this way by setting the rails down into the corners. I'm cutting out two square notches for the, where the rails will slip in at the top of the basket. The hardware cloth is so stiff, you probably could make the basket without even using the rails. They're just kind of to give it some form. So we'll cut the, the rounded corners, little saber saw here to go around. And they don't have to be perfect. Again, it's a garden basket. One of the main reasons to have the rails, and you'll see when we're all done, is I sandwich two pieces together is so you don't have a sharp edge, you don't have to worry about poking your fingers on the edge of the hardware cloth. Then I just hold the two end pieces together and I'm sanding them so that the rounded corners are close to similar from one end to the other. Again, we'll bend the hardware cloth around these corners to give us a good shape to our basket. So the vegetables will set in it really nice. We don't have to worry about a sharp edge or a corner anything that might poke our food. The hardware cloth, it's half inch square and it's exactly 24 inches. This is important. You want to know exactly how big your hardware cloth is. So I'm cutting the rail pieces to 24 and a half inches. I pre-drilled the holes and these are just some finishing nails. Again, the rail, it's basically just to hold it together. It's not something that has to be real sturdy otherwise I'd use screws the problem with screws is you have to be really careful that you don't split it pound the nails in and this is hard the tables wiggly wobbling all over the place this resin folding table that I'm using as a, as a workbench so, down on the concrete sidewalks, a little bit more stable. Much, much easier to pound the nails in. So I have one nail going each direction on each end of the rail. So it'll be eight nails total, two on each end of each of the rails. And we don't really need any bracing on the bottom because, again, the hardware cloth is so stiff that it will hold its own form. If you were using some other softer netting like a screen or a poultry netting a coarse window screen something that didn't have the structural stiffness to it then you'd you'd probably want to put two braces at the bottom but not necessary for this hardware cloth basket then we'll just set the nails down in so they're below the surface and there we go two ends with the two upper rails Now we're putting on the hardware cloth and we're using staples. They're called staples. They're just wire 
like a letter U, they look like this. And I'm just putting several on each end, and then I'm flexing and bending and molding the hardware cloth around the corners that we cut, the rounded bends. And this is why it was so important to cut the rails 24 and a half inches for the 24 inch hardware cloth. So the edge slides right down the, the middle of the railing of the end piece. So whatever, if you had 18 inch or 20 inch, whatever your cloth is, whatever length you're making it, you want to do the math so that it fits right down the side of the end pieces so you can put your staples right in the middle. And these are a little bit of a trick to pound in. It takes a little bit of finesse and getting used to to make them go down in straight. And we don't want to split this end piece. Then once it's all nailed on, we just clip off the wires to the proper length. Half inch netting, 24 inches long. That's a lot of clips to do, one at a time. <laughs> and there we go. That's the shape of the basket. So far, so good. Now I'm sandwiching another rail on the outside of the basket. And I pre-drill the holes because the wood being as small as it is and it's just pine, it would easily split. I'm using four screws. The reason for this is it will cover up the edge of the cut hardware cloth. And it's very pokey. It'd be really easy to hit your finger on it and, hey Scarlet. And, and hurt yourself. So by having it sandwiched together, so pre-drill the holes and sandwich the two pieces together and that will protect the edge of the hardware cloth so you don't have to worry about anybody hurting themselves. Even when you pre-drill the hole, sometimes the wood splits. Oops. Now I am putting a, a piece of the two by four that I cut off when I was making the handle, when I was downsizing the two by four. I'm running this down the bottom. I'm putting one piece down the center just to give it a little bit of support on the bottom so when you load it up with, with heavy vegetables like squash or cucumbers or things, it, it's sturdy. Hindsight, after making the basket, this is fine and I'm happy with it, but if you wanted a basket that would set straight up and down, you probably want to put two of these, one toward either side so that when you set the basket down it doesn't tip over one side or the other it tends to lean over because of just having an inch and a half railing down the middle so two of these side by side would let the basket set straight up and down now the end pieces to for the handle I made them about 18 inches long now when you drill your holes the screw in the bottom something that when you're going from two different directions I can't drill the hole in the center or I'd hit the other screw, so it's got to be off to the side a little bit. So that takes a little planning. And more than once I've run into a screw or a nail and then have to drill a new hole. Galvanized deck screws. So one on the outside into the other piece of 2 by 4 Two on the inside to hold it in place. Oops. And we got the two uprights on, so now the handle. And I just, again, took a two by four and ripped it down in half. And then cut the corners on a 45 to make it kind of octagon shaped. And this is a beefy, heavy-duty handle. It probably could be half the size and be fine. 
The only disadvantage to making everything so big like this is it's really, really sturdy and will hold a lot, but it does make it heavier than it needs to be. So here's the end with the inner rail and the outer rail and the upright for the handle. And it's 24 inches of hardware cloth, so it's 24 and a half inches for the basket. And then the 18 inch rails are on either end, so the handle at the top's 24 and a half inches too. If you have a friend that's interested in living self-sufficient, as you are, somebody that has a nice garden, please share this video with them. And if you have any questions to do with anything about living self-sufficient, ask. We're more than willing to help you because we truly want you to succeed. We want you to pursue your self-sufficient life dreams. Living happy, living fun-loving, and living carefree. <laughs> Live life doing it yourself.